it by the chapters? Yes, please. Yeah. Yes, please. Right, so let's do first one first. So, meanwhile, when a crowd of many thousand had gathered so that they were trampling on one another, Jesus began to speak first. To sorry, his, Michelle. So, oh. Brother Joe in this chapter 12, Luke. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I can't see it. Far away. Yeah. Um, be on your guard against the yeast of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. There is nothing concealed that will be that will not be disclosed or hidden that will not be made known. What you have said in the dark will be heard in the daylight, and what you have whispered in the air sorry, it's a bit blurry Lee, in the ear, in the inner room will be proclaimed from the roots. I tell you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who will who, no, who kill the body and after that can do no more. But I will show you whom you should fear. Fear him who, after the killing of the body, has no power to throw you into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. Are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? Yet not one of them is forgotten by God. Instead, the very hairs on your head are all numbered. Don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. I tell you, whoever acknowledges me before men, the son of man, will also acknowledge him before the angels of God. But he who disowns me before men will be disowned before the angels of God. And everyone who speaks a word against the son of man will be forgiven, but anyone who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. When you are brought before synagogues, rulers and authorities, do not worry about how you will defend yourselves or what you will say, for the Holy Spirit will teach you at the time that you should, st you should say. Wow. So I just get, I, I've, in reading all of 12, there's some real hard sayings from Jesus. So it's really strong stuff. And I like that. Um, it's interesting, right at the beginning, that they were trampling over each other. So they were super excited in great numbers to hear what Jesus had to say. How wonderful that would be in the average church, hey, if they really trampled all over each other to hear God's word. Um, but yeah, his, his warning predominantly is beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. And we all know that we don't need leaven. It, you only need a little bit before it fills up and spreads like cancer. So just a little bit of pretense cannot be contained. And with God being so omnipresent and, and he knows everybody's hearts and everything, that's why he says, for nothing covered, that will be revealed for nothing is covered that will be revealed so right from the very first sin with adam and eve he felt shame and he and he tried to hide from god but we can't do that at all because god sees and knows everything he's just it's quite amazing isn't it to know that he's everywhere and knows everything all at the same time it just blows my mind so he's he's talking about in a way in a way everything that happens everything that we say and do will be manifest on judgment day it sort of brings you to that really i mean can you imagine if, how we couldn't stand all the sins that we've ever done if imagine if god revealed that to us all in one go oh my goodness that would be well for me it'd be horrific <laughs> i don't think i could cope <laughs> so isn't it wonderful he just gently reveals stuff to us through the holy spirit it's a beautiful thing it really is um I, I really am grateful that he does it so gently um so it just makes me think that you know judgment day um you know we all want justice and and finally there will be justice because everything we say and do um he knows about and we have to answer for actually so it's quite it's quite interesting so in one way in this in this passage he's telling us to have fear and it's interesting because the un unbelievers or the ungodly 
they don't fear God at all. They worry about all sorts of things, but they never fear God. They never fear what's to come to them. It's quite quite an interesting thought, really. Um, and the other twist often is taught is that God loves everybody, but that's not found in the Bible. <laughs> so there's a lot of truths that that need to be manifest. And um, we need to have a very strong fear for him. Um, we fear things like if we're walking down the street in the dark, we'll worry that we might come across some somebody might harm us. But as Jesus says in here, you know, what can be the worst that can happen is that our body can be killed. But so much more harm can be done to our souls. Um, so in one way, he's telling us, yes, fear him and fear not being real and not being right like the Pharisees. And then in the most beautiful twist, he then says, but you you need to fear me. But you're not insignificant. I know every hair on your head. Even either, even God, God knows every hair on Ivor's head. <laughs> I did ask some before, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so isn't that beautiful? You know, we, we're to fear this awesome God who knows everything. Everything's going to be manifest. Everything we've ever said and done is going to be brought to the light. Nothing is hidden. But at the same time, he 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 um we we're, we're not insignificant because even if even as going back to his his omnipresent again, he knows when every sparrow falls, and it just it just so honestly, it's just amazing. It really is. So God knows all, and and he says, "Do not fear," but we are we are valuable. And he's redeemed us. Praise the Lord. That's what I got from got from that, really. Um, but just the fact that a very little bit of pretense can just go like that leaven. Um, and how beautiful that everything we're going to have. Every, every, there's going to be justice everywhere, you know, and it just it just brings you to it, doesn't it? That one day you're going to have to answer for all the things we've said or not done. And it should keep us on tippy toes i think so that's quite a good warning so that's that one so shall i move to the next one is that okay for everybody yeah. or yeah, yeah very good. right so the parable of the rich fool someone in the crowd said to him teacher tell my brother to buy the inheritance with me jesus replied man who appointed me a judge or an arbiter between you then he said to them watch out be on your guard against all kinds of greed a man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions and he told them this parable the ground of a certain rich man produced a good crop he thought to himself what shall i do i have no place to store my crops then he said this is what I'll do. I will tear down the barns and build bigger ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I'll say to myself, you have plenty of good things laid up for many years. Take life easy. Eat, drink and be merry. But God said to him, you fool. This very night your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is how it will be with anyone who stores up things for himself, but is not rich towards God. Wow. Yeah. So, um, so I've just got, we've just got this little light that's not helping me much. Right. Okay. Um, oh, where am I? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> and then do I... We don't... To seven. Oh, I, I missed that bit, didn't I? Sorry, I missed a bit on the first bit. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, sorry about that. Sorry, I just realised I've missed um, 
eight till 12. Sorry. <laughs> you missed a little bit. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. Sorry just about that. Bit. We, we, we yeah. let you off that. You, there was yeah, a lot... I missed that. <laughs> I was so <thinking. laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. You have been so gracious not telling me over. Yeah, sorry, because it's it's so dark in here. Can we put the big light on? I'm just saying to Lee, it's too dark in my house. So I couldn't read it. Sorry. So, yeah, so we were talking about I missed out the unforgivable sin. Please forgive me. So in, in that passage, it's talking about, I mean, in a way, two things bring us to salvation, confessing our mouth and believing. And we're justified by faith. And our profession of faith doesn't save anyone. So we need to be speaking about god i mean it's too much of a good secret to keep to ourselves and there should be no secret service christians so isn't it beautiful to say one day jesus will say eileen's mine neil you're mine and he'll say that you know before before god he you know he or she is mine so what he's saying is if we deny him he's going to deny us so it's really important that <laughs> we're bold and we speak out about Jesus because he's everything. So why wouldn't we? You know, it's a secret we can't keep to ourselves. Um, and then the, the blasphemy side of things, um, you know, um, knowledge of a person. Um, so, so going back to, you know, when Jesus was on the cross and... Um, People were saying, you know, he was saying, forgive them for they do not know what they do. In a way, it's best to not know Jesus um, than it is for a Christian to know him and then let him go in a way. Because um, how we blaspheme Christ is when the spirit has told us who Christ is, but then we don't profess him or we or we, you know, and all the rest of it. But as Christians, I don't believe we can do the unforgivable sin because he says, you know, what, what he has cannot be snatched away. So that's my belief. I believe if we truly are Christian, there's no way we can deny him. But it just helps us understand and examine our hearts to be sure that we are authentic and that our hearts and lips are in, are in, are in agreement. So yeah so that was that bit sorry I missed that out so we're back on the parable of the rich fool um so yeah so this man was concerned about his legacy so he he funny how he went to to, to Jesus he obviously saw Jesus as a rabbi or somebody who could judge um but Jesus doesn't care about anything else but the kingdom of God and nor should we <laughs> frankly um but it this is very much a warning about being uh, being aware or beware of being covered covetous. So the world promotes covet covetousness. It um you know from all all the media from advertisements. It's all about wanting, wanting, wanting. And God's law is completely against covetousness. It makes people because the whole point of reason why it's the last um, commandment is because it that's that that's the one that makes everybody want to steal kill and cause adultery over and it very much reveals our hearts um so when we when we are covetous we are we're refusing to honor god and we're refusing to be grateful it's it's gratefulness that stops us being covet covetous covetous <laughs> i'll say the right word so like life is not what we possess um you know uh the parable of the rich fool the rich man was greedy and he wanted more and you find that with people don't you you know very very rich um uh i don't know uh, celebrities they never they never stop they always want more and you know greed greed is a, a massive sin so this man was selfish and he wasn't going to share but a christian is a generous person and they need we need to share and um and that's why he was foolish and it just helps you think you know what what price tag is there to our souls you know really so it's really you know i just think really the real key thing is to be really really grateful for everything we have and for god 
if I think we always say this, don't we? If we seek God's kingdom, everything else is going to be given to us. So, sorry, I'm up to date. Right, here we go. <laughs> Do not worry. So then Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear. Life is more than food, and the body more than clothes. Consider the ravens, they do not sow or reap. They have no storeroom or barn, yet God feeds them. And how much more valuable you are than birds. Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his life? Since you cannot do the very little thing, why do you worry about the rest? Consider how the lilies grow. They do not labour or spin. Yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendour was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, how much more will he clothe you? O oh, you of little faith. And do not set your heart on what you will eat or drink. Do not worry about it. For the pagan world runs after the, all such things. And your father knows that you need them. But seek his kingdom and these things will be given to you as well. <laughs> Our favourite verse. Do not be afraid, little flock. For your father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to the poor. Provide purses for yourself that will not wear out a treasure in heaven that will not be exhausted where no thief comes near and no moth destroys for where your treasure is there your heart will also be and it's interesting isn't it what we could ask ourselves you know what are we afraid of and what do I worry about because anxiety is a fearful concern and he tells us quite a few times in the Bible generally not to fear. I think he's, is it one for each day or something like that? And yet we tend to do it all the time, don't we? All of us sort of go through some kind of anxiety. Um, we do it all the time. And actually, if we're really honest, it's a judgment of our faith. Because mm -hmm. if we trust in Jesus, we won't worry. But we're not perfect and... Mm -hmm we fail so so we tend to be anxious and that's that that takes us away from faith you know it's really funny I often say to myself you know you know he says do not fear do not be anxious but if he says do not and we go against it that's actually a sin so I try and tell myself when I get anxious because like he says it's like a rocking chair isn't it anxiety you just sort of go backwards and forwards you don't actually get anywhere or do anything you know but I, I try and check myself if I start getting anxious and I think well he says do not do not and if I'm going against it I'm sinning mm -hmm. and I'm showing him that I haven't got faith so that's what I get from that and it's interesting isn't it the beautiful Psalm 23 for you're with me your rod and staff they comfort me so why would we why would we be afraid because God's with us all the time you know, no matter what we what we go through, to the ends of the earth, he's with us. You know, so I I, I know that's easier said than done because hands up, I get anxious. But wow, he's with us all the time. What what should we fear? Who sh who should we fear? Um, and he's telling us again to seek the kingdom of God first, and everything else is, is secondary because it can. We don't need to be paralysed by fear because that's the devil in a way, isn't it? The devil knows that that's one of my Achilles and we, you know, in a way we shouldn't allow that to happen. Um, and what I love is that when he says, do not be afraid, little flock, that is so beautiful. It's so comforting. It's that shepherd again, isn't it? Looking after his beautiful lambs. Um, I just love that. I really do. And he's telling us to put our treasure in heaven beyond the reach of where thieves can steal and I, that really hits me sometimes I mean especially now as we're trying we're saying you know where we are in life and we're like I want to put treasure in heaven where it's always you know that that's why in a way we need to get moving and serving serving the Lord in a much bigger way because that's all that stands is what we do for him 
everything else will end up being will just be burnt up it's the gold and the silver is what we do for him and for each other um and it's quite isn't wow what a challenge sell your possessions and give to the poor you know that's pretty strong stuff um but it makes perfect sense because everything else can be destroyed or stolen um yeah so that's that one so watchfulness be dressed ready for service and keep your lamps burning like men waiting for their masters to return from a wedding banquet so that when he comes and knocks they can immediately open the door for him it will be good for those servants whose masters find them watching when he does i tell you the truth he will dress himself to serve will have them recline at the table and will come and wait on them it will be good for those servants whose masters find them ready even if he comes in the second or third watch of the night but understand this if the owner of the house had known what hour the thief was coming he would not have let his house be broken into you also must be ready because the son of man will come at an hour when you do not expect him peter asked lord are you telling this parable to us or to everyone the lord answers who then is the faithful and wise manager whom the master put in charge of his servant to give them their food allowance at the proper time it will be good for that servant whom the master finds doing so when he returns i tell you the truth he will put him in charge of all his possessions but Suppose the servant says to himself, my master has taken a long time in coming and he then begins to beat the, me the, the men servants and maid servants and to eat and drink and get drunk. The master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him and at an hour he is not aware of. He will cut him to pieces and assign him a place with the unbelievers. That servant who knows his master's will and does not get ready or does not do what his master wants, will be beaten with many blows. But the one who do, does not know and does things, deserves punishment, will be beaten with few blows. From everyone who has been given much, much will be demanded. And from one who has been entrusted with much, much more will be asked. So yeah, so we're we're obviously all meant to be waiting for our master and eager to serve because jesus was a, a beautiful servant and that's why he says blessed are the servants who are watching and ready for his return and that so he was i think on one version he was girding his loins and he prepared a meal for them being ready and prepared so we should always be waiting and watching for for jesus's return and be and always be ready and serving. Um, but then he also goes on to talk about the faithfulness of the steward. Of, of the, uh, steward. Um, all, all that we own, we are just stewards of. We must honour him. So our money, our life, everything belongs to him. Um, so when he's talking about, suppose a servant goes off and says, oh, well, my master's taking a long time you know that's like saying well the cat's away we can just you know we've got time to play and it's kind of a mirror image of the rich fool that we just read a little bit earlier you know we can just you know we can just do whatever we like and he was and obviously jesus was quite strong in this like he always is and he was saying the master will cut him in two for being cruel to the to the servants and from what I read in this, he was a believer because he um, he set them off with the unbelievers. So he was an unfaithful steward, which makes me think of maybe possibly being some pastors in a way. You know, so a lot of pastors are, um, are not good stewards to their flock. And, and that's why he goes on to say, much is given will be required. So hearing God's word, hearing God's word, will never be neutral. It's worse for a believer than it is for somebody who hasn't accepted it. And it just makes me question, you know, how much has God has God given me or you? 
as to how much we should um, take care of it and what responsibility we have with that. So here we are with the 49, no peace but division. I have come to bring fire on the earth. Wow. <laughs> Not a care bear God. Bring those two together. <laughs> yes. Yep. I have come to bring fire on the earth and how I wish it were already kindled. But I have a baptism to undergo and how distressed I am until it is completed. Do you think I came to bring peace on the earth? No, I tell you, but division. From now on, there will be five in one family divided against each other, three against two and two against three. They will be divided, father against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. He said to the crowd, when you see a cloud rising in the west, immediately say it's going to rain and it does. And when the south wind blows, you say it's going to be hot and it is. Hypocrites, you know how to interpret and the appearance of the earth and the sky. How is it that you don't know how to interpret this present time? Why don't you judge for yourselves what is right? As you are going with your adversary to the magistrate, try hard to reconcile to him on the way or he may drag you off to the judge and the judge turn you over to the officer and the officer throw you into prison I tell you you will not get out until you've paid the last penny yeah so <sighs> another hard saying of God and it just blows my mind you know as I said earlier it's not seeker friendly that is it God's come to bring fire to the earth and what's what, what really breaks my heart in that is he's saying he wishes it was kindled bearing his soul because obviously most of what we know in this text obviously he was he it was hell coming from, you know obviously when jesus were going to be um having to deal with the the real strife from from his father he was saying that this was going to be a baptism, not of war. Um, sorry, he was saying he has a baptism, which he is distressed by. He was talking about the cross. But this baptism was not of, of the water, but of fire. Jesus is going to be swallowed up in God's wrath for our sin. So that was real. You know, that was really kind of a, a vulnerable time, really, from what I've, I read in that. And he was saying, do I come to bring peace? And yet he's called the Prince of Peace. But no. It's division. All humans are going to be divided by him. Following Jesus is going to cost. There's no neutrality, just for or against. There's no sitting on the fence. That's it, really. So we know what to expect. We're going to have division. And, you know, I personally, you know, it's, it's I found that verse a real comfort about family being divided because that's very much what's happened in our family. And then interpreting the times, he's basically telling us, you know, don't wait till the last judgment. It'll be too late because Christ divides. And that's me done. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> well, well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Really, really good. Really, really good. Okay. This is the time we critique it. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> or we lift it up or we... Yeah. Say well Ashley. done, my faithful servant. Or we say da 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 da. But I thought it was absolutely wonderful. Hallelujah. Okay, so what stood out for you, Neil? It seems as you're back a, a, a bystander there. Is there anything that you would want to add to that? Because obviously, I wouldn't want you to go for oh. the whole <laughs> just listening and basically <laughs> not saying anything. So I'm giving you your opportunity to say anything if you wanted to. Yeah, cool. Thanks, Thanks Ivan. Amazing, really a great breakdown. Um, <laughs> loads, of, uh, loads of revelation there. So, yeah, thank you, Jesus. For that. Absolutely amazing. So one of the things that really stuck out for me, and this actually, this is a bit of a personal situation. So this happened this morning, uh, mm. was the blaspheme in the Holy Spirit. Mm. Um, so last night, well, I woke up this morning and was being tormented. 
um, mm. you know, forks running around in my mind and things like that. And and then um, and then I was just I was just frustrated. I think I was frustrated with God that God was. This is how I felt at the time. You know, I'm just. Mm. I was just frustrated that I guess that I was allowed to have these torment, allowed to be tormented, and I'm not closer to God than I'd like to be. Although every day I, I grow, but it's just I want more, I want more. And it was like, and I said, and hopefully I didn't blaspheme, but I said something along the lines of. Holy Spirit, do your work or do do the work you were sent to do. <laughs> Something along those lines. And I said it out of frustration. Um, and it wasn't rude because it was during prayer. It was during like a whole prayer, you know, during prayer to God and thanking God and thanking the Holy Spirit and, and thanking Jesus. You know, just thanking the Father, Jesus, the, the Father, the Son and the, and the Holy Spirit. But then the frustration got in there a little bit. And I, and I said, Holy Spirit, you know, do your work. Kind of like do what you were here to do. And anyway, so then I apologized. And then after Jim, I apologized even more and I repented and I said it would never happen again. So I'm just hoping and and you know, and not I won't let the enemy set in where it's like, okay, you're not forgiven, you'll never be forgiven. I'm not gonna allow oh, that. Okay. But at the same time, it's like, you know, okay, what is blaspheming? I did look it up. Um and it's just basically showing a disrespect to a divine to to divine or to uh, what is holy so you know yeah that, that's sitting a bit heavy on me at the moment so that's what stuck out to me either yeah. uh, so yeah it's a good point yeah it's a good point thank you. brilliant point and it is the, the the one of the one of the things that stuck out and you both touched on it but it was a specific so when we look at the blaspheming uh in Let's go to Matthew 12, verse 22 to 32. Matthew 12, verse 22 to 32. It talks about um, the difference between criticisms of him, mm. so, like Neil was just saying. Yeah, yeah. To me, you know what I mean? That's not blaspheming. You know, you know right. why, why do you let me have this dream? That's yep. criticism of him. That's not blasphemy. No. no. Um, but it's... It's um uh, when it's the unpardonable sin is when you attribute attribute the miracles of God to the power of the demons, which is a very important thing to understand. That mm -hmm. is blaspheming. So the Pharisees said, and you said that word last week, um, that he attributes these miracles by the spirit of Bezalabad, which is Satan. Yeah. So when we look at that 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 particular uh, um, scripture, it's it's the sin attributing to the miracles of the Lord Jesus to the devil. So the mm. miracles in power of the Holy Spirit, in effect, is saying that the Holy Spirit of God is the devil. So if we're attributing the miracles of the Holy Spirit to the devil, you're saying the Holy Spirit of God is the devil. And that is blaspheming. Mm. Yeah, very clearly in Matthew, Matthew 12, verses 22, Matthew, Mark, 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 Luke, and John, Matthew, Mark. Matthew 12, verse 20, 12, Matthew 12, 22 to 32, it says, 22 to 32, it says, then they brought a demon-possessed man who was blind and mute, and Jesus healed him so that he could both talk and see. So he's healed the, the blind man, and all the people were astonished and said, could this be the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard this, they said, it's only by Bezalel, the prince of demons, that this fellow drives out demons. So Jesus knew their thoughts, and he said to them, every kingdom divided against itself will be ruined and every city of household divided against itself will not stand and we saw that as um yeah. uh, michelle read that read that in the scripture if satan drives out satan he is divided against himself so how can his kingdom stand out and if i drive out demons by bezelabad by who 
do your people drive them out? So then they will be your judges. But if by the spirit of God that I drive out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Oh, again, how can anyone enter a strong man's house and carry his possessions unless he first ties up the strong man, then he can plunder his house. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever yeah. does not gather with me scatters. And yeah. so I tell you that every kind of sin and slander can be, every kind of sin and slander can be forgiven, but blasphemy against the spirit will not be forgiven mm. that's really important you know that sin it, it cannot be committed by a true believer number one that's right that's, that's number exactly one right. it cannot yep. be committed by a true believer it's only um, he said it about the pharisees uh yeah. and it says about you know fears that they're committed by backsliding or yep. it's not an impardonable sin care of saying oh god why haven't you done this that's not an impardonable no. sin why? Why is it not a, a part of sin? Because we can repent and God can forgive that, but he cannot forgive blasphemy. No, no. Yeah. So there's a big I... difference. So we can be restored back to fellowship with the Lord. Even when we go, come on, God, what, what are you up to today? Like yeah. you said, and then I repented. Um, and then you're back. Yeah. You're back right. Do you know what I mean? But he, you know, the, the disciples, um, when they heard this, they, they realized that this is serious. And this mm. is, you can't say the Holy Spirit is of the devil because you're saying God is of the devil. That is clearly, you know, what we, what, 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 what was, what we looked at here. Um, even you know, but there was words of encouragement in the beginning. I think that was really important. He turned to the disciples um, and it was all about hypocrisy. You know, yeah. if you look at those first chapter, the breakdown on one to twelve was about hypocrisy, about you know what we say and what we do are two different things. So he's literally saying to the disciples, you know, don't just be readers of the word, you know, or you know, go out and do what you say, you know, and and, and don't just do it for the audiences, live it, <laughs> live the Christian life. Don't just go out and just um, you, you know. Give for the sake of giving him from when people are in front of yeah. you. You know, do do it, you know, it, with the heartfelt, you know. Mm -hmm. So, again, he's talking about time, talent, and tre treasure. And, and listen, you, you, we, we understand a lot of these pros prosperity preachers get a lot of stick. But Jesus emphasised about giving. You know, yeah. and it was really – and it's really important that, you, you know, we can easily switch – our own hypocrisy around turning the emphasis on those that are doing whatever they're doing. Do you know what I mean? But that's another way of easy setting our attention of us not doing what we're required to do. Basically, um, what this passage of scripture says is we need to keep our eyes on ourselves. Do you yes. know what, I mean? what are yes. you giving? Are you giving your time? Are you giving your talent? Are you giving your money? Similar as that. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And it's not, you're not giving it to the church. You're not giving it to the place of where well, you're giving it to me. Do you know what I mean? I'm looking at your heart. Oh, That's man. what the scripture is saying. He's also saying in that passage of scripture, whatever you put before me, your work, your job, whatever else, you know, uh, you, you, why are you worrying about it? Because, you know, you talked about fear, but there was an antidote to that fear. Because he said, if there is fear going on, you ought not to entertain it. You need to really move towards everything in prayer and supplication. Mm. Yeah, the scripture tells us very, very clearly, you know, do not be anxious about nothing, but in everything, prayer and supplication. So he's talking about fear. So again, and it, you linked it, the main thing you, you, you linked it to was the fear of God. So, and, and obviously to emphasize, it was talking about God's protective interest in us um it also mentions about he cares more than us than the birds than every every, every living creature he loves us more uh yeah. and you know that was that was really comforting and reassuring and it, and, it, and it also says that um that it, it is the um the, 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 he's the provider of all things yeah mm. and, and and it talks about rejection of christ by an unbeliever is not the unforgivable sin. Either a person may spurn the Savior repeatedly, yet they may turn back later. So even if you're rejected by 
unbelievers or whatever it is, you know, and they might persecute you. That that that's not the unpardonable sin. They can come back and they can yeah. repent. They can come back. Amen. Oh, that was Amen. that was really really good stuff. So well done, Michelle. Yeah, oh. yeah really really good. Round of applause for that. <laughs> really, 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 really good. But more importantly, at the end, he talked about the warnings being ready. You know, he was talking about us getting ready and um, our heavenly treasures are fully insured against theft and spoilage. I love that. You know, where, you know, don't put your emphasis on your job uh, or whatever you're doing. Oh, I want to wash it away. <laughs> put your emphasis on, you know, yeah. um, him. <laughs> And what yeah. what he what he's doing in your life, and you you, you know, and and not to put uh, accumulating on our material possessions, you know, yeah. you know, really emphasised on that uh, by investing in our heavenly treasures for eternity. That's much more important um, for us to do, and it's Amen. to use our strength and our time for serving Christ. So, you, you, you know, your strength and your time is used for serving no matter what. Hallelujah. Well done, Michelle. Beautiful. Over to you, Eileen, waiting patiently in your format. Over to you. I think your brains fell asleep now. <laughs> uh, no, we're wide awake. You can do it. You can do it. Uh, Go for it. Right. <laughs> Luke 13. Now. There were some present at the time who told Jesus about the Galileans, whose blood Pilate had mixed with the sacrifices. Jesus answered, Do you think that these Galileans were worse sinners than all the other Galileans because they, they suffered this way? I tell you, no. But unless you repent, you too will all perish. Those or those 18 who died, when the Tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think they were more guilty than all the others living in Jerusalem? I tell you, no. But unless you repent, you will, you too will all perish. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in the vineyard, and he went to look for fruit on it, but did not find any. So he said to the man who looked, took care of the vineyard, for three years now, I've been coming to look for fruit on this fig tree and haven't found any. Cut it down. Why should it use up the soil? Sir, the man replied, leave it alone for one more year and I'll deground it and fertilise it. If it bears fruit next year, fine. If not, then cut it down. Right. Should I have done those two together? No. <laughs> okay. Now, some people came to Jesus to tell him about a group of Galileans who had come to the temple to give sacrifice. Now, Pontius Pilate had sent his soldiers to massacre them. Now, when they came in into the temple with the animals, to be sacrificed and the blood was taken from them as they were doing that these soldiers came in and hacked the people to pieces it was a horrible massacre and their blood was squirting out from their bodies and they it all mixed with the blood of the sacrifice when the word of the murderers got to the people in the streets people were confused and they were asking where was God in this? It's in his holy temple. Why would it happen? And then people start to believe that these people could not be as good as they made out to be. Now, was it God's wrath that, that ha why it happened to them? Now, Jesus, uh, he knew what they were struggling with. And with that, he said, do you think these people, these Galileans were more evil than any other Galileans? Jesus said, I tell you, no. Unless you repent, you will all perish. Then Jesus tells them about the Tower of Siloam. Eighteen people died. Do you think they were guiltier than any of the others? People that lived in Jerusalem, 
unless you repent, you also will perish. The scripture makes it clear that we are all have injustice. We are not, none of us are perfect and we have done wrong. And things, horrible things happen to, to good people. It's not that they've done something wrong, it's just that they're in the wrong place at that time. But also, we've got to be prepared in case this happens. We've got to be ready with God. We've got to repent and put our trust in him because we don't know when the time will come, when bad things will happen and we could die suddenly and have no time to repent. So uh, we just we just got to make sure that we're with God. Or likewise, we will perish. And then Jesus tells the parable of the fig tree. Now, the owner of the vineyard had a fig tree. Oh, I better read it in my first. Have I read it? No, I haven't. What's that? It's a crippled woman next, I think. Oh, right. I've, I've done the fig tree, so I'll I've go. Fig tree, yeah. yeah, the owner of the vineyard had a fig tree. For three years, it had not bought any fruit. He would come to inspect it regularly. He had to go up close to it because the fig tree has thick coverage. The leaves uh, are very big and thick. So you have to go up and really inspect it to see the figs. So he um, decided then when he saw after three years, he was, he was expressing his disappointment of the fruitless tree. And he said to the gardener, Chop it down. It bears no fruit and it's taken the goodness from the soil. However, the gardener was pleading with the owner, please give it another year and I will dig around and I will put plenty of water and fertilizer in it. Now the owner in this, in this parable, the owner of the fig tree is God. The gardener is Jesus and the tree is Israel and us. The lesson for us in this is time can run out. God's patience is limited. God requires repentance from us for our sins. But if there is no fruit, then there's no repentance. This, his patience will come to an end. Seek the Lord while he can be found. Right. That's that one. No, it's a crippled woman. On the, on the Sabbath, Jesus was teaching one of the synagogues, and a woman was there who had been crippled by the Spirit for 18 years. She was bent over and could not straighten up at all. When Jesus saw her, he called for her to come forward and said to her, Woman, you are set free from your infirmity. Then he put his hands on her, and immediately she straightened up and praised God. Indignant because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath, the synagogue ruler said to the people, There are six days to work, so come and be healed on those days, not on the Sabbath. The Lord answered him, you hypocrites, doesn't each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or donkey from the stall and lead it out to give it water? Then, should not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, who has been kept bound for 18 long years, be set free on the Sabbath day from her what bound her? Then he said, when he said this, all his opponents were humiliated, but the people were delighted with all the wondrous things he was doing. Okay. Now, uh, right on this day, Jesus was teaching in the synagogue. It was on the Sabbath. 
the ruler invited him to teach because that's the thing that they did there. If a rabbi came into the, to a town, then a synagogue ruler would invite them in to teach at that time. Now, while Jesus was actually teaching, he noticed a crippled woman. She came into the synagogue and she was bent double right over and she could not stand up straight. Now this happened for 18 years. So this woman, all she could see was the ground and her feet. She couldn't see anybody's faces. She couldn't see whether they were smiling or whether they were sad. And she could not lift her hands up to the Lord and praise him because she was bent completely in that position. Now, he, Jesus had, he had pity on her. He, he saw and he knew all the suffering she, she'd gone through because that woman had to walk actually to the synagogue and she must have been in real pain to be stuck bent over for all that time. That was going to hurt. This wasn't a normal position to be in. And Jesus said to her, woman, come to me. And she went over to him. And he uh, laid his hands on her. And he, and he told her that, that you'll be healed. And then as soon as she, he said that, she stood up straight. And she was so, so happy and she was praising God. She could look up to the heavens and praise her father in heaven. And all the people that were there in the synagogue, they were delighted to see what a wonderful miracle that Jesus had done. But there was one person that wasn't happy. It was the ruler of the synagogue. He was angry and he was telling them, there's six days to do this, to do miracles. You do not pick the day of the Sabbath. And Jesus says to him, you hypocrites. Doesn't each of you untie your ox or your donkey and lead it to water? Then why not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan kept bound for 18 years, be set free? His opponents were humiliated, but the people were delighted with all the glorious things that had happened. And Jesus asked, what is the kingdom of God like? Do I go on to that one? No, that one comes on after. That's that's it. She was rejoicing because of what what had happened. That Jesus had compassion on her and took away that that pain. That's beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. Beautiful. I'll go on. You go on. <laughs> I'm what I've done. You go on. You don't, you I'm, use, I'm using my brain too much. That's good. Keep going. <laughs> <That's horrible. laughs> right. The parable of the mustard seed and the yeast. Then Jesus asked, what is the kingdom of God like? What shall I compare it to? It is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his garden. It grew and became a tree, and the birds of the air perched on its branches. Again, he asked, what shall I compare the kingdom of God to? It is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into a large amount of flour until it worked all through the dough. Right. Okay, Jesus asked what well, was a kingdom of God like. Yes, it's like a mustard seed and the man planted and it grew. And the mustard seed is very, very small, but it grew into a very big tree. 
her and all the birds could come and rest on it, on the branches, and make their nests in it. And again, he asked, what shall I compare the kingdom of God to? It's like yeast that a woman took and mixed into a large amount of flour. It made the dough. And of course, you only need a tiny little bit of yeast in the flour and it will double its size. Now, what it's about is growth. When Jesus started with a dozen men in his ministry, and those men made disciples, and those disciples made disciples. Christ's church grew. It kept growing. And it is now all around the world. That is the power. The power of the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. Right. Two more. Yeah. <laughs> Right. When Jesus went through the towns and villages teaching as he made his way to Jerusalem, someone asked him, Lord, are only a few people going to be saved? He said to them, make every effort to enter through the narrow door, because many, I tell you, will try to enter and will not be able to. Once the owner of the house gets up and closes the door, you will stand outside knocking and pleading. Sir, open the door for us. But he will answer, I do not know you or where you come from. Then he will say, we ate and drank with you and you taught us in the streets. But he will reply, I don't know you or where you came from. Away from me, all you evildoers. There will be weeping and there will be gnashing of teeth when you see Abraham, Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, but you yourselves thrown out. People will come from east and west and north and south and will take their places at the feast of the kingdom of God. Indeed, there are those who are last will be first and the first will be last. Do you want me to do the, the sorrow, Jerusalem, at the same time, or do you want me to say Yeah, why not? At that time, some Pharisees came to Jesus and said to him, leave this place and go somewhere else, because Herod wants to kill you. He replied, go tell that fox. I will drive out demons and heal people today and tomorrow, and on the third day I will reach my goal. In any case... I must keep going today and tomorrow and the next day for surely no prophet can die in outside Jerusalem. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who killed the prophets and stoned those who sent you. How often I have longed to gather your children together as the ends gather their chicks under their wings, but you were not willing. Look, your house is left, left you desolate. I tell you, you will not see me again until the day I say, you say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Right. On the way to Jerusalem, someone asked Jesus, Lord, are only a few people going to be saved? Jesus said, many make every effort to enter through the narrow gate. Because many, I tell you, will try and they will not enter the able to go. The owner of the house will close the door. No one will be able to get in. And you'll be pleading. Sir, please let me in. But no, the answer is, go away from me, you evildoers. Because you're not, you're not mine. I don't know you. You may have 
taught false gospels. You may think you have done wonders for me, but I don't know you because you have not had a relationship with me. And therefore, I don't know you. And also, it can mean that we've got to be ready again because if we're not with him, then we're against him. Even if we think we're Christian, we, we, we cannot do what we want to do. We can't be in the world and, and be of God. We've got to live for him. It's got to be our number one. And he, then he will know us. And we will be allowed in, into the kingdom of God. And that will be wonderful. But for those who do not, then they will be with a gnashing of teeth. All right, now then, some Pharisees came to Jesus to warn him that Herod wants to kill him. Jesus replied, go tell the fox, I will drive out demons and heal people today and tomorrow and on the third day, I will have reached my goal. That meaning he was going to die. Jesus is on the way to Jerusalem, is on the way to his death. But he didn't have to fear Herod because he knew that he had those two days. And those two days, he's going to do as much as he could to show the people who he was, that he was the son of God and that he could save them. He has been teaching for three years to them. And uh, he knew that not everyone believed. And then he said about the prophets, <laughs> no one, no prophet dies outside of Jerusalem. It's in Jerusalem where they're stoned and put to death. People turn against them because they don't like what they hear. And then he started weeping as he was thinking. He was thinking about the children, Israel, his children. And he wanted to, to, to gather them close to him like a, a chicken gathers its chicks under its wings, but they didn't want to know. And then the time when he got to Jerusalem and he had to go through all that agony, all the whipping and the flogging and hanging on that tree. And he was doing it for them and they turned their backs on him. But he tells them that he won't be, he won't, they won't see him again until they say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Oh, well done. Amen. Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well done. Well done. Well done. Okay. <laughs> Wouldn't be so fitting. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Maxine, Maxine and um, Brother Javin, an opportunity to come in and say what stuck out for them. And Brother Lee, Lee wants to come in as well. I, I I tell you what, it's really struck home to me, and I think I've said this before, that I feel that I am the one that Jesus is going to turn away because I'm I am doing things my own way, and I know that, and I, it's really um brought it home to me. Uh, what Michelle said was very clear. And what Sister Eileen said is also very clear. As as they said it, it is so. Um, the word is powerful and um, it's a double edged sword, isn't it? If we don't if we don't follow the doctrines, then we can fall away. And that's what I think is happening to me. I think I've been falling away. But thank God I've seen it. So I'm going to repent after this today. Amen. Amen. I'm going to and, repent. That's the, and that's the beauty of it is, you know, that is the beautiful thing about, you know, we have, we have a choice. 
God gives us free will, doesn't he? At the end of the day, it's it's free will. It's really powerful, you know. I mean, not being funny, you know what I mean? That's very brave of you to even, you know, just say that. Do you know what I mean? You know, um, and I nobody knows. Though. Not not any single one of it, not any of us know can guarantee right now where we're going right now. So let's be honest, right? Do you know what I mean? What you're exp what you're feeling. We're yeah. all feeling that, and that's good. Why? Because it's the fear of the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Well, it's important. Amen. Uh, you know, this whole passage in passage, passage uh, Thank you. number 12, Thank we're talking about the fear of the Lord, right? Amen. So, Amen. You, you know, yes. you're doing it right, Lord. Do you know what I mean? You know, help Lord, me, this Lord. Do you know what I mean? Lord. That's really powerful. But, you yeah, know. I Imagine the Pharisees, the arrogant ones, that think they are, they, they think they're already there. They think they've already got their seat and they're not even in. Yeah. That's worse. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Do you know what I mean? No, do you know, no, yeah. Right. So, it, it, you know, the, the scripture says, that, you know, it will, the, the Lord will say to some people, depart me, I don't know you. Yeah. It's scary. You know, that's the truth. Very. That is the very, truth. Very. It's the truth, and it's and it's up to us to be in our relationship with God through the Word of God, so that we come to know God, that we can hear God's voice. Because if you're hearing God's voice, Hallelujah! For me, if I'm fearing someone and I'm hearing someone, do you know what I mean? I'm going to want to listen to that person. Amen. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's only if I think I'm bigger than bad and I don't need to do what mm. says. Do you know but what I mean? <laughs> and but the, 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 there's where the problems lie. So it's it's important that we have that fear. Do you yeah. know? Now I want to yeah. tell you, you are a child of God right now, <laughs> like we all are right here right now. But we have stuff to do. Mm. You know, it tells us very very clearly. You know, we've been we've been saved to serve. Number one, uh, we've been called to put God first before everything. Number two, and He will judge us. Bottom yeah. line, we are all going to be judged. Number one, and mm. that's you know, and that's that, that's a, that's a that's that's a very very uh, interesting passage of scripture that we went to. Uh, you know, tribes talking about the day of grace when we will all live together. When this will all come to an end, there will be no anxiety, there will be no fear, there will be no suffering, there will be no panic. Do you know what I mean? We'll be in with the Lord, Hallelujah. But right now, you know, there's a time that we got to go through. You know, and it, and, it, and it talked about that. Do you know what I mean? And it, this, this was emphasising the hypocrisy. It was also talking about the Pharisees. It was talking about, you know, what we do in public, you know, and what we do behind closed doors, you know. And But God sees everything. Hallelujah. And He's omnipresent. Omnipresent. So very, very powerful. You know, we need to keep praying. Brother Jaron, do you want to come in? Anything? Anything? Bless you, brother. Brother Lee, you want to come in after Jaron? Well, yeah, just once again, the narrow door. I make every effort to enter through the narrow door because many, I tell you, will enter and will not be able to. It's a very sobering thought. Very sobering thought. Um, yeah, a bit like Michelle. I think I've come back from Turkey and... I was very in the spirit and yeah, recently I've just been slowly going into what's the word into old habits and I know they're not what God is calling me to do it's not it's not anything that God has called me to do so the same as Michelle it's very sober and if this isn't a message from God to stay on the straight and narrow then I don't know what it is so thank you Michelle thank you mm -hmm. God bless you uh, opening my eyes as well. Yeah, Beautiful. very powerful. That, that's, so you're not alone. You're not alone. Um, oh. I, I, I tell you now, if you're if you're on this platform right here right now, and you're you're feeling anything different, then there's something wrong. Because mm -hmm. those warnings, you know, if you looked at if you looked at the passage of scripture that Jesus spoke, right. You know, the, the red in your Bible. If you've got one like mine, it's red. No, I haven't got red. Haven't oh, got you, ain't red got red. Mine. you ain't got red? Oh. No, it's just, just words. It's just the words. No, you need red. You need the ones that give you the red. These are G yeah, Bible. Oh. Let me show you. Look there. It shows you the red. Jesus speaking to you. Oh. When you're reading this, 
You're reading this. You're you're you're, you're getting a holy spirit boom. And it's a warning. You know, these are warnings to us as people. You know, and if we we got to take note of it, do you know what I mean? It's like everything he's telling us is like, don't be like the Pharisees. You know, so it, it, you, you know, it's very 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 powerful yeah. when we look at this passage of scripture. And it talks about, um, well, let's get deep for the last five minutes because I, I think I'm, I'm being a bit flaky. Here. <laughs> uh, I'm being a bit flaky. Here. Right, let's go. Let's go a bit deep. Right, let's go a bit deep. These passages of scripture here, you know, some serious warnings are going on. And he's talking about, you know, what's going to happen. The, the, you know, he says, you know, I ain't, I ain't come to bring peace. I've come to bring, you know, gnashing at the teeth, violence, hatred, suffering, and hell for those Fire. who change their <laughs> hearts. Do you know what I mean? It's like, you know, he's talking about your heart condition. So, you know. Yeah. To be renewed, right? Renewed is right. We've got an opportunity right now to change our heart, to take away our yeah. heart of stone, you know, and receive this heart of flesh that God has given every single one of us an opportunity. And in the absolute truth of that, he's saying that if we don't, we'll be cast forth outside. Do you know what I mean? That the gentles, Gentiles will travel before um, the, the righteous, for those that think they're righteous. Hallelujah. And, you know, God has a plan for everyone to be blessed, but some will be rejected, you know? Yeah, because, That's because... really, really powerful. And when we look at... Um, there was the other bit I was looking at. The, we were talking, was talking about... Pastor. It, it, yes, yes, Maxine. Can I, sorry, can I just interrupt you? On It's going on called what you were saying. And it says, um, it says in three five, unless we repent, mm. the manner in which a person dies is not a measure of righteousness. What is important is not to die outside of God's grace and care. Yeah. The way to avoid such a fate is to repent, to come to God through the care of the of the physician Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you were saying, isn't it? Come to Him. Oh. So, yes. In other words, Maxine, don't listen to the words that are in your head telling you you're not a child of God. Come Amen. To him. Amen. Thank Come you. To him. Yes. Yeah, and the devil's repent, a liar. Repent yeah. and believe. Amen. Because Lord. unbelief, unbelief is a problem. It's a huge problem. And I need I to doubt. tell you right now, we need to get a handle on unbelief in our walk. Hallelujah. Amen. We're sinful. We're going to sin. There's none of us are perfect. We're going to sin, but we must believe and we must, and we've been given that way out. And it's important that we come back in, you know, it's that, you know, God wants our faith in him. You know, Amen. he knows our hearts. He knows that he wants us to come with our weaknesses. He wants us to come with our falling, falling our, our, our fleshes to him but it's when we get arrogant and we don't and we just think it's all all right and da, 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 and it's just normal he it's don't never like all it. right is it pastor it's never all right to be in sin it's all right for him because he forgives us amen he forgives yeah. us he loves yeah. us enough for us to forgive us he knows we're sinful oh. but it's not for us to be sitting in condemning in sin it's for us to come <laughs> out Get out and do something about it. And also, the more important part about that was the other thing about when he was talking about the labouring. You know, he's given each and every single one of us a plan. And this is what he's talking about. He's talking about the fruits, but those that don't bear the fruits. He's saying, basically, hold on a minute, I've given you, you've come into the vine. You know, I've not brought you into the vine to be barren, to not produce. You know, I am in you, so why are you not producing? There's a reason why you're not producing, because you are in rebellion and not doing the things that you're called to do. So it's really some heavy, heavy warnings in this passage of Scripture. For every single one of us, Christ will come to judge the church. Who is the church? It's not the building. It's, it's true. You. It's you. We are. It is, it's the body of Christ. 
it's you. Amen. <laughs> Ain't the building, it's you. Mm -hmm. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen. What you decide to do with that. Well. <laughs> 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 in the name of Jesus, <laughs> I rebuke that timeless right now. I lift you up in Jesus' name. <laughs> God Amen. bless you all. <laughs> it's been such a wonderful meeting. Listen, it's been so it's beautiful, been... absolutely wonderful, Michelle Eileen. You know, it's been a pleasure listening to both of you. Hallelujah! And it's been so good that you guys Amen. were in the Word, tentative, bold courageous strong and it was absolutely wonderful lee do you want to say anything before we go god was here wasn't he but how beautiful your wife's um your wife's um 40 minutes word do you want to, do you want to, do you want to tell us that? <laughs> 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 no i didn't mean it like that <laughs> it was like <laughs> they're supposed to do it in 20 minutes by the way do you know what i mean it took 40. <laughs> <laughs> Far away. Reading. Come in, Lee. I know what you the beautiful readings. <laughs> I think she was trying to outdo me like on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> she nearly did it, nearly did it. There you go. <laughs> Sorry if I took too long. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought she done very well doing that. Yeah, she done awesome. really well. She did really well, yeah. So uh, yeah, really proud of her, yeah. So yeah, yeah, and my mum as well, Eileen as well. Very proud of that too. <laughs> yeah. I, I, mean, I mean, Eileen had, Eileen had um, was it, 35 passages and Michelle had, um, Michelle had 59, wasn't it? 59. Yeah. So it was double. So it did, it did warrant the 40 minutes, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to share with everyone, though, there's a real blessing in doing this. Yeah. Although it's scary. You're you really take it into your soul because you've got to because when you're sharing it you've got to I remember really it really take it in yourself mm, so it's a yeah. real blessing really Amen Amen yeah. Love real blessing. Thank you Thank you ladies I'm really really proud of both of you Look, but I'm going to leave it on this chapter first chapter thirteen verse one to five unless you repent Yes <laughs> Amen <laughs> Amen I, Honestly That's our way out guys. That yeah. is our way out. Is it, yeah, thank yeah. God. Thank God he yeah. gave us a way out. Isn't it? This is why there's no condemnation in him. Thank yeah. God. This is why there's no excuse. Yeah. Ooh. 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 <laughs> God bless you all. Well done. God bless, God bless you, everybody. Thank you, thank, thank you, Michelle. You've all you done oh, amazing. Every single one of you. Yeah, absolutely Thank wonderful. You, well done. Chapter 14 next 13? 14. 14. Oh, 14. 14. 14. Yep. God bless you yeah. all. God bless. Thank you. Nice one. Bye bye.